Everyone knows Mario, the hero of the Mushroom Kingdom who has countless times fought through Goombas, Koopas, Chomps, and Bullets in order to rescue the princess. But that's not all. He also practices medicine, is a prolific golfer, is a professional kart driver, and he is even occasionally a brawler. But what about his younger brother Luigi? For the most part, he was behind Mario every step of the way in his adventures. In fact, if Mario ever died, it was up to Luigi to carry all of the weight. And in the end, who gets all the credit for saving the princess? Mario. It just doesn't seem fair, does it? Well, Nintendo has tried to rectify this injustice by giving Luigi two of his own games. The first game was Mario is Missing, which we will not speak of, and the second is the game I'll be covering in this review, Luigi's Mansion. Released in 2001, this was one of the flagship titles for the GameCube, intended to show off the capabilities of Nintendo's newest system at the time. It initially was the first best-selling game for the GameCube, and it sold overall 2.19 million copies in its lifetime. But this still poses the question of whether this game was any good, or if it was just overhyped. Well, let's take a look and find out. The game starts off with Luigi entering an abandoned mansion after winning a sweepstakes that he never entered. So, obviously... It's a trap! He soon finds out that the mansion is in fact haunted, and then soon meets an old man named Professor E. Gat. Gat tells Luigi that the ghosts in the mansion were formerly just portraits of dead people, and were mysteriously taken from their portraits and turned into ghost form. Furthermore, Luigi soon discovers that Mario had arrived at the mansion before him, but he is nowhere to be found. Soon, Luigi finds out that the hauntings have all been a result of a large amount of booze haunting the mansion. Furthermore, Luigi finds out that Mario himself has been kidnapped by the booze and placed into a portrait. So, it's up to Luigi to find Mario while returning all of the ghosts to their portraits and stopping the booze. But how does Luigi combat these ghosts? Well, that's where the Poltergeist 3000 comes in. A highly technical and extremely advanced device used for catching ghosts. Okay, it's a vacuum cleaner, but it does get the job done. But how does Luigi catch the ghosts? Well, this is where it gets interesting. You see, there really is a technique to the whole thing. In order for Luigi to catch a ghost, he must first get them to show their heart. This allows you to see how much HP the ghost has, along with stunning them. In order to do this, Luigi must catch them off guard and shine his flashlight on them. For normal ghosts, shining your flashlight on them is all you need to do. For the ghosts from the porches, however, you will have to be craftier. By using your Game Boy Horror, you can scan the ghosts to get a hint as to how to get them to show their heart. Once you figure out the weakness and they show their heart, this is where the battle begins. Once the ghosts show their heart, you must start to vacuum them up as soon as possible. Depending on the HP of the ghost, the fight may take a few seconds, or it could take a few minutes if you lose them. When you start vacuuming up the ghost, you need to treat it as if you were catching a fish. You need to jerk the joystick in the opposite direction that the ghost is heading, while sucking it up at the same time. Also like catching a fish, if you give the ghost some slack and then jerk it back, you will catch the ghost more quickly as you are exhausting it. Along with just sucking ghosts in, the Poltergeist 3000 can also shoot out either fire, water, or ice if you vacuum up special medallions. Some ghosts require the use of these medallions in order to catch them. Along with just portrait ghosts, there are 50 boos hidden throughout the mansion and they hide in rooms that have already been cleared of normal ghosts. Once found, they can be vacuum up. However, unlike normal ghosts, they don't have to be stunned, but also unlike normal ghosts, when they're being vacuumed up, they could very easily escape you. Since the poltergeist doesn't have the normal pull it does with the other ghosts, sometimes the boos can escape into the hallways or other rooms. Normally you can just follow them with no problem, however, sometimes they go into a wall where there is no room. This flaw can prevent you from completing the game at 100%. It doesn't happen often, however, such a fatal flaw should still be noted. Along with catching ghosts, the mansion is filled with a large amount of money, which can be found in the form of coins, bills, gold bars, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and sapphires. Finding these monetary items determines the condition and size of your mansion once the game is completed. Also once the game is completed, you unlock the hidden mansion, which may reverse the setup entirely and make the booze move more quickly, thus adding to the replay value. Now for the reviewing. The graphics were fantastic for the time and look fairly decent today. The textures are decent, and the ghosts in Luigi himself are fairly well rendered. The gameplay itself is hit and miss. The catching of ghosts is alright, but the general navigation is where I have the problem. Walking around and aiming is problematic due to my video game pet peeve number two, which is inverted controls. If that doesn't deter you, then the stiff controls probably will. It can be extremely problematic to simply aim your flashlight at a particular ghost in order to capture it, resulting in a loss of health. 
Also, this game tends to have a problem with specificity. Usually you will acquire a key that will unlock a certain door, then your Game Boy Horror will show you where the door is. However, sometimes the professor will just tell you where to go, and if you weren't paying attention the first time, well, tough shit, good luck wandering around the mansion for the next 20 minutes. However, these problems don't deter from the experience too much, and they can be overcome after playing the game for a little while. So, does this game make up for the fact that Luigi had to stay hidden in the shadows for all this time? Well, the game is flawed, but if you stick through it, you may find a fairly enjoyable experience. Recently, it has been announced that Luigi's Mansion 2 will be released for the 3DS. While I'm still waiting for the day that Luigi will get his own platformer, until then, I can say that I'm happy with Luigi's Mansion for the moment. You can still find this game for around $15 online. So, until next time, this has been Edog. Still reviewing, and still ain't scared of no ghosts. See you next time.